We had two uh, important city items this week that happened back to back. Uh, first, we had a, a, a multi-million dollar loan that was approved. Uh, and then literally the next day, a $5 fee for a park was also approved as well. Right. You were at both of these meetings. We kind of wanted to compare and contrast the two and give a, a unique perspective on on both of these stories. Can you kind of just walk us through uh, the the first day or the first story? Yeah, no, it's the uh, Evansville Water Sewer Utility Board. Mm. Um, this board oversees basically the, the expenditures of the utility, which is managed by the city. Mm. Um, so what's going on there is they need to replace up to a thousand miles, definitely 600 miles, up to a thousand miles of city water mains. These are the, the things that run underground that pr- pump water all throughout the city. The things that you, you read about uh, during the winter time yeah, because the, they break. Because they break. And that's why we need new ones because we have 600 miles of cast iron antiquated uh, water lines. I mean, it's not lead based like what's going on in Michigan, thankfully. Mm. But cast iron is not good for us either. Mm. It's not good for the infrastructure. It's not good for anything. So we need to replace that. So um, the city has a two-year plan to address um, 30 miles of the 600 miles that we need to address. Um, And that plan would cost us, excuse me, $46 million over just two years. Hmm. Um, Now, this is interesting because $46 million doesn't just come from nowhere. Sure. So they're asking for a loan, a bond, basically. And to pay off that bond, they're going to increase water rates over the next two years. Okay. They're going to go from about $19 on average to 24 up to $29 in, and by 2018. Okay. So just two years, and, you, and, and the average customer is going to be paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars more a year on just their water. Not talking sewer or trash, just their water. I was going to say those are per month numbers that you just were kind of throwing out there. Right. Those were per month and you add those up, you go 19 to 24, it's five, five extra dollars a month on average. Of course that fluctuates depending on usage. Mm -hmm. So, um, increasing 10 over two years, that's, you know, uh, uh, more than a hundred dollars a year. But what was interesting about not necessarily the story, but your observation while you were writing the story and while you were tweeting about it, but, uh, you had pointed out that that nobody was there to nobody from the public was there to discuss it. Right. See, the thing is, um, this is a slow moving operation to, to get this bond and to get this water rate increase approved by the state. Um, and I've been writing about this since February when we learned that they wanted to raise water rates to to pay for this project. Mm-hmm. Probably written three or four stories since then, telling the public what's going on, what's happening, trying to keep them. And form so they have an opportunity at all the levels to voice their opinion. On this week um, was just a preliminary step. There will be other opportunities for the public to to intervene if they want to try. Um, but this was basically the water board giving the utility permission to go get this this bond, hmm. um, which is you know the the board's appointed by the mayor. Um, so this is kind of the citizens connection to stopping it because the city council has absolutely no say over what goes on with the water uh, rates. Yeah. Um, while city council controls sewer, they don't control water. So you think the public would care a bit. I gave them an opportunity to advance them, let them know that they had a chance to come to this public hearing to speak out. Jenny Collins, the chief financial officer for the water utility says, uh, now is the public hearing. She looks to her left. She looks to her right. And the public hearing is closed immediately. There are people there, but most of everybody at the, the meeting were people who are affiliated with either utility uh, or contractors who sure. who benefit off such a project. Yeah, or the media too, right? Or the media. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was two of us there, mm-hmm. which uh, take that as you will. Um, but yeah, that's very interesting. There was nobody there actually since I've written story. I've only received one comment, and that was from uh, Representative uh, Gail Reken who had a few more questions and I was able to answer those questions in the, my most updated story. But other than that, I haven't had any direct contact with a member of the public who cares that their water bills are going to go up uh, for the next two years. And I tell you what, if they're just doing 3% in two years and they want to do the full 600, mm-hmm. you're talking about water rate increases by $5 probably 
for the next several years. Sure. This is a huge project. Yeah. Well, now let's talk about uh, what happened the day after. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the the rate increase for Wesselman Woods? Sure, yeah. So just the next day, um, I'm at the Parks Board meeting. Uh, and I let the public know um, two weeks ago that Wesselman Woods Nature Preserve is asking the Parks Board for permission to charge a $5 admission fee for ages 13 and up, and then a $3 fee for 3 to 13 year 3 to 12 year olds rather than free for uh, less than three year olds, obviously. Mm. Um, so that will get you into the uh, coveted trails and into the nature center, which is starting to take uh, shape and actually have stuff in it. Um, but Wesselman's has never charged an entry fee in its entire life. Uh, Wesselman's is interesting. So the city obviously owns all that park land and the, the preserve and the center. Uh, however, um, the nonprofit, um, has a contract with the city to manage the preserve. Okay. They get about $140,000 a year in operating expenses. Um, and then they get money through other membership dues, grants, what have you. Hmm. Um, so John Scott Foster, who directs the West ones out there says it's time to charge a fee. We've got to increase our, our general fund. We've, you know, this is going to be all for operational expenses. This isn't going to be for some big capital development. This is just to, to keep doing what we're doing, only do it better because he says it's not free to clean up the trails. You know, you have a tree fall down on a, on a board and it's a, a big pain, I guess, to, to clean it up. But. Sure. So this, so the money would be offsetting what the nonprofit provides or what the city provides. No, the city will still provide whatever they're providing. This okay. is actually just extra money for, for the foundation oh, okay. basically for the, uh, for the center. Okay. Um, yeah, this is just money on top of it. So this isn't helping any city budget deficit. This is only helping um, the nature preserve de deficit. So the interesting thing about that meeting, you know, like I said, I've advanced this. I believe at least one other television station advanced the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the public knew about this. And I know that some of our readers had voiced concern on social media, um, on some Facebook posts, uh, on Twitter. And I hadn't heard much from Scott Foss, John Scott Foster or from Brian Holtz, the parks director about complaints received there. But the decision comes down. The board unanimously approves this fee. Mm -hmm. Why not? They, they were all actually very supportive of the idea. All five members uh, gave the thumbs up and were glad to, to charge um, entry to Wesselman's. And then it blows up, right? So now we're seeing on social media, people are, are, are outraged, are outraged. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's interesting. I guess there were two people at the parks board meeting who spoke up in regards to the fee. One was a former Curry and press photographer who su said he supported the fee, but you know, you got to get an option for people to come on a free day. Sure. You know, have an option for families to be able to just come on a Saturday once a month or something, mm -hmm. which, you know, it doesn't sound like a very unreasonable request to me since sure. it's been free for 40 years. Yeah. Um, and then another gentleman, um, who was completely opposed to the fee. He took probably what most of our readers' stances is, is that this is public land. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been free for so long. Don't take away one of the last free things we have in this city. Mm -hmm. Evansville Museum now charges entry when it didn't used sure. to. Of course, they have expanded greatly, and I could see why they need to charge. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're seeing that now that people are not happy about this, this fee. But I guess they – don't care about the water rate increase or the $46 million project that's being spent in our city's infrastructure. Yeah. What do you think that is Noah? Yeah, that, that is a good question. I think that Wesselman woods is tangible. Like it's, we can go out and you know, yeah, we can see it. Experience we can walk it. on. Yeah. We can walk on the trails. We can, we can have fun there. Um, and it's beautiful. It is. It's one of the, isn't it one of the biggest, uh, Park municipal type parks or woodland areas yeah. is still left in, in wood preserves. It's the biggest in Indiana, at least, and, yeah. and which puts it at the end. I think that's ranked very high in the country. Sure. I wish we had that stat offhand. So, yeah, it's and it's been free for 40 years. Sure. Um, and how much they're struggling, I don't actually know. I know that basically John Scott Foster is saying that he's got a crew with a lot of ideas and they don't have any money to do it. Mm. So, We'll see what comes from the rate increase. Will people stop going? I don't know. 
Uh, the rest of the park is still free. Rest of the park is still free. That is a great point. Um, you can still get to, you know, the the basic shelters uh, and some of the outlying things, but you can't go in the uh, the fenced in preserve area where the the nice trees and trails are in the nature center mm-hmm. without paying that five dollars. I guess it's, I might as well note now there is a membership option. Noah or I could each buy an individual membership for. I think $35, and that would give us an annual pass in. And families, I don't know what the terms on families is, but it's a family pass is $40 a month, $40 a year, I'm sorry. Um, so that might, for people who actually like to regularly attend Wesleyan Ones or, or just want to support it, a membership option sounds like the best deal. But you know what, Noah, just like the Iceman, I think a lot of people in Evansville just go to the woods maybe – what once a month, once sure, uh, once a, you I know, visit, for a while. Yeah, I visit uh, Wesselman not as frequently as I used to, but yeah, just a couple times a a year or a few times a year. Sure. I mean, it, could you be deterred from dropping five dollars just to go walk around the trails? Yeah, I I would probably pay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I don't. But you could see how somebody else wouldn't. Right? Oh sure. Yeah. No. Definitely. Um. Yeah, and it, I would I would like to know more about the family plan too. Is it is it sort of like how, uh, you know, one of my buddies has his his family plan cell phone set up? Just it's just like him and whoever like he wants five or six friends. Or like sharing a Netflix <laughs> account kind of a uh, style. Yeah, yeah. But we actually brought the, uh, these two stories up, and and we wanted to talk about it a little bit. But we also want to know what you think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as well. So so hit us up on, on Twitter. I am at ECP Zach Evans. No underscore. No, no underscore. ECP Zach, Z-A-C-H-E-V-A-N-S. Uh, and I'm at uh, at Noah Stubbs, N-O-A-H-S-T-U, B as in boy, B as in boy, S. You, we'll also post this on Facebook and you can kind of just get on our comment thread on Facebook. And we'd really like to hear what you think about both stories.